In this lecture, I will be talking about experiments. I'll be talking about the three main characteristics of an experimental research design, and then talk about some variants of different types of experiments that we might see. So first, what are the three characteristics of randomized controlled experiments? Um, we sometimes just call these experiments or RCEs for randomized controlled experiments. First characteristic is that subjects are recruited and then randomly assigned into two groups, the treatment group and the control group. Um, and this means that you should have no difference between the two, that you are ensuring that the treatment and the control groups are identical. And because you've randomly assigned them, you're eliminating potential confounds that are based on the subjects. So you've collected your sample, right? Um, you might have 100 people that you're doing this experiment on, and if you randomly assign them, you should have the expectation that they're going to be basically equivalent on major factors that could be confounds, such as gender, such as age, such as level of education. By randomizing the assignment to treatment and control, you're ensuring that the groups are more or less going to be equal. So the only thing that differs is the treatment that you are applying. Then, the second characteristic is that the researcher is administering X um, or the treatment. So remember, X is our independent variable. Um, so you're administering this treatment to that treatment group, but not to the control group. And so by having the researcher administer this to the treatment group, you're eliminating potential confounds that may emerge based on the environment. So you're implementing this so that the only difference between the experience of the subjects is um, whether they receive the treatment or not. So once you have divided them into treatment and control, you're supposed to be implementing the treatment fairly quickly so they're not experiencing other um, differences. And the researcher may administer a placebo of some sort to a control group in order to ensure that they um, have some sort of equivalent experience of having the treatment without actually getting that treatment. So we can talk a little bit about what this would look like in practice. Um, and the third characteristic is that researcher then measures the dependent variable for both groups to assess the treatment effect, right? So the researcher has applied that treatment and they want to look at what is the difference between these two groups um, after the treatment has been applied. So what has been this overall effect of the experiment? And by virtue of having controlled for all the group, the members of the different groups being essentially the same, um, you're saying that the only thing they have different is that treatment, then therefore the only difference between them should be that treatment so that when you see a dependent variable difference, um, that means that that difference in the dependent variable is due to the treatment that you have imposed. So let's talk about three different uh, or four different ways you can design researches, re research designs here. So as a base point of comparison, We'll talk about a static group comparison, um, and this is a cross-sectional observational study. So it's called static group comparison because you're comparing two groups, one group that received the treatment, one group that didn't, and you're just looking at one moment in time, so it's static. Um, and here you see the X, this means treatment, O means observation, okay? And the fact that it has these uh, brackets around it, these parentheses, means that the researcher didn't impose that treatment on it. So this could be looking at a study, say, of the effect of gender on party identification. So the researcher didn't assign gender to somebody. They're just observing the assignment of that treatment and seeing how it affects um, party identification here, right? So they're looking at women and they're looking at men. So that would be the two groups. So that's a non-experimental design. Now let's move into actual experimental designs. The first one, a randomized control experiment, RCE. Um, so this first version is one where you're only looking at the post-test. Okay, so this means that you have the treatment, you impose the treatment, and then you just compare them afterwards, two groups. So this is the treatment group, this is the control group, and you're looking and saying, well, what's the difference between you know, these two factors here? Um, and say that that difference is, that's the, the causal effect. So imagine that we're doing a study that looks at um, 
having negative campaign ads, and we want to see how having negative campaign ads affects um, likeliness of voting, right? So uh, you're just asking people, how likely are you to vote? So with one group, you showed them a bunch of negative campaign ads and then asked how likely they are to vote. Another group, you didn't show them negative campaign ads. Maybe you just showed them commercials for, you know, Coca-Cola, um, and then you asked how likely they are to vote. And so if you were to find that people who saw the Coke ad um, were 4% less likely to vote according to their responses than people who saw campaign ads, you would say that the treatment effect of seeing those campaign ads um, led to a 4% difference. Another version of this, however, is to look at a pre-test and a post-test. And you do this to, to ensure that the groups were indeed equivalent beforehand. So with this example of um, the ads, uh, the campaign ads and likeliness of voting, you would ask people before they see either the Coke ad or the campaign ad, how likely are you to vote? Are you, are you planning on voting? Um, so you ask both of those groups and then you administer the treatment to the group uh, that's in your treatment group and then you compare it afterwards again, right? And so here you wanna be comparing not only the difference between the two groups, right? So you wanna be comparing post here and post here, um, but you also wanna be comparing over time the difference between this group, within this group, and the difference within this group. And what you should be ideally seeing is that these groups are, the, the treatment and control beforehand were basically the same, um, and that there is a difference here after they've received the treatment. Um, but one problem with the pretest and post-test is that maybe asking questions about whether you are planning on voting and interested in voting makes people more primed um, to receive that campaign ad. You, you've got them thinking about voting, and so then when they see the ad, it affects them differently. And so this is why we have a design called the Solomon 4, and this is a third version of an experimental design. So the Solomon 4 is named that because you have four different groups. You have two treatment groups, here and here, and here, and two control groups, so a total of four groups. Um, so for these first two groups, that is basically the same as the pre and post test, right? So you ask them with the pretest what their likeliness of voting was, you administer um, the campaign ad treatment, then you ask them what their likelihood of voting is here. For the control group, you ask them what their likelihood of voting is, you showed them a Coke commercial, there's no treatment, and then you ask them what their likelihood of voting is. But if you wanted to control for the possibility that the pretest somehow primed your respondents in some way, you might also compare with another group of people. Uh, one that only had the post test. And so here you have somebody who um, just has the treatment and then you have the observation, the post test of asking how likely they are to vote and then a control group here as well. So it's basically combining these two um, research designs. And the reason you would do this um, is to avoid or, or is to, to discover if you have any potential problems um, that come along with having a pretest. In general, you want to have a pretest, but you want to be wary of the possibility that it would change your results. Um, and the downside of the Solomon 4 is that you have to have a larger sample, right? You need to be implementing into four different groups. So it can be a little bit expensive, but it can lead to greater internal validity.